Hello everybody, this is Cengiz Hasman from Northern Cyprus. Uh, welcome to my latest video, how to draw against a strong international master. Uh, this is my game played in Novi Sad, Serbia on the 5th of April 2018. My opponent is um, originally from China but plays for Canada. He was rated 2465 and his name is Kai Yang. I hope I've pronounced it um, correctly. Uh, yes, I was white against um, Kai. And he played the Nimzo Indian defense against me. Uh, here I do have quite um, a lot of options such as knight f3, g3, a3, e3, uh, even f3. Uh, but I chose the classical variation or the Cabablanca variation queen c2 and the logic of this is usually there is a bishop exchange bishop to knight exchange on c3 and white aims to take the knight uh, or the bishop um, with the queen leaving his leaving himself a good pawn structure and also to make use of the bishop pair because if I play a3, then I still have the bishop pair, but my pawn structure is a bit bad. So um, white doesn't want to go into this variation by playing queen c2. And, and why does black do this? Um, black, as you can see, gets very quick piece development so in fact my opponent castled um, in his next move so in uh, move four he's got his knight bishop out and his castle so this is very quick he just needs to develop his queenside pieces and white is slow in development however there's the bishop pair um, which is um, good compensation and some pawns in the center. Okay, so I played a3. And as discussed just now, I took with my queen. And my opponent thought it was time to push a pawn into the center. I, I developed my knight and he took on c4. Actually, um, an, a, a number of years ago, I had exactly the same position against a strong grandmaster from England, Jonathan Parker. And so that game, even though I lost it, um, did um, help me with this game, actually. So even your defeats um, are not... Um, uh, for nothing you, you should still learn even if you lose and, and then actually we usually learn more from our defeats than from our wins so I'm, I'm developing my queenside pieces I, I would like to use the C file attack this C7 uh, weakness my opponent attacks my queen and I play queen a4 the reason is I'm attacking his bishop, he's protecting at the moment, and if he tries to move his knight, he then loses his bishop. So I'm making it a bit awkward for him, and he comes for a queen exchange, and I accept. I'm trying to simplify, um, just like my game against... Um, the strong grandmaster Nicholas Pert. I'm exchanging, I'm uh, trying to exchange pieces at the right time, and this is why I gave my bishop for my opponent's knight. It's a good bishop, actually. 
Uh, he um, he could have taken with his knight, but um, I think he wanted to uh, unbalance the position, uh, and he took with the pawn. Uh, so the knight we're taking with the knight is a little bit better, according to our friend Houdini. And I then played e3, offering an exchange of his active bishop, and. If he does an exchange and goes back, then my bishop will be uh, very good on this diagonal. So everything's, um, there's no sort of no complications at the moment. He played c5. I just brought my rook to the c file. And he did the same. And I just join my rooks so i don't have any pieces between my rooks and he played c4 my opponent is just over 300 elo points higher than me at, at the time and in fact um he went on to become a grandmaster um about a year after this game so, and I believe um, he won this tournament too. So, um, he doesn't want to draw against me. He, he loses elo points. So, he's trying to mix things up a bit, really. Try and make me make mistakes. And I'm doing my best not to. Uh, I now challenge this c4 pawn. Um, even and he does have a majority, three to two majority on the queen side. But as you can see, my king is very close to um, coming over to the queen side if there's an exchange of pieces. And in some situations, this active king can actually win you the game. And now he's doing the same. Uh, he's trying to bring his king over. Uh, you can stop the video and try and guess my next move. Um, it's trying to make things difficult. Try to, I'm trying to, with my next move, I'm trying to make life difficult for my opponent. So pause the video if you wish. And I play knight a5. And this stops my opponent pushing his a pawn. And in some positions, my knight can come, come on to c6 or maybe b7 and c5. Maybe my rook can come to c6. Um, my opponent has to sort of um, do a bit of thinking here. Um, he decided to bring his king even closer to the center. And I'm just here, I just make a basic simple move, but I think is effective. If I can, if you can take your, take the center, why not do it? And the more squares we control, the better. And, and actually this um, E4 move is controlling the D5 square, which the knight would like to come, I would think. And I play king d2. I could have played king d3. This was an option. But um, I played king d2 in order to help the exchange of rooks and then reach uh, a knight endgame for knight each. I exchange rooks and then I bring my other rook to the C file. So he then takes and I take. Okay, um, I am going to um, pause the video here or actually end this video. This is going to be part one of how to draw against a strong international master. I'm trying not to make the videos long, so um, you can uh, continue watching um, the second part of the game in the next video.